The what, Kristen? I need what? I'm live? Oh, yeah. Hello. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, you guys. Welcome to my daily broadcast here at Tool Tool headquarters coming to you live from Los Angeles, California. I'm Ani, inventor and creator of this little doodad called the Jewel Tool, and I'm here to show you some exciting things you can do on your Jewel Tool. So everyone who has joined in, I welcome you. Come. Today's little emoji I put saying see you in 10 minutes was champagne cheers. You could tell what kind of mood I'm in right now. Woohoo! It's nice and sunny here in California. I kind of just want to lay out by the pool, but I'm here with you guys. Actually, I'm kind of excited about some things I'm doing today. I, I like polishing and I love transforming something from meh to fabulous. And so that's what I'll be doing today. And I'm going to throw in a flat nose hammer. So I know you guys, a lot of people use this. I use this. This is actually one of mine that came off of this bench. I use this for everything, hammering, flattening, like wires, sizing rings and everything. It's one of my favorite, favorite hammers. So I'll go ahead and refinish the tip for y'all. Today, y'all, you slow, man, you slow, <laughs> fast here. So, and I'll be cleaning up some ugly bezels, silver, some bangles. Um, actually, I wanted to patina this, oh well. It is what it is, and showing you insides, just all sorts of good stuff. You'll be learning some little new ideas and tips and tricks, and I might just throw in a little something else. Who knows what? The who knows where the wind blows, <laughs> and Ani will just <laughs> have a plan, and then <laughs> we go off to the left side. So you guys, so who's here, Kristen? Tell me, who is here? I would love to say hello and welcome you all here for the fun. We got Janice, Janet. Hi, Janet and Lisa. Karen and Carol and Bonnie. Oh, so far my faves, keep going. Oh, Kat, my girl. Myra, hi, sweetheart. Hi, Penny. Penny, my Penny. I love it. You guys, thank you for watching. Thank you for coming. Tom, Tom, negotiator from Arizona is here. Thank you for the support on YouTube. Margaret, welcome, welcome. Come on, have a seat. Oh, oh, uh, Holly from YouTube is asking me, did I get a great booth at SEMA? Okay, you guys. You know things don't go good when they say, you know, you're in the restoration section this year. I've been there for like, what are we now, 10 years? And saying, those are really difficult booths to even get into. Okay, thank you for the reminder, Sima. You know, Captain Obvious over there. So I'm trying to stay positive, but honestly, you guys, it's like with them, it's the same thing over and over again. It's like, they know I'm this woman in this power tool and I just have to deal with just no offense. I love men. Don't get me wrong. I love men, but just men who just don't put me in the same category or respect level as like if they were talking to a man. So I basically, the, the, but the booth I wanted, they gave it to a guy who just sits on a chair, you guys all day long at this show on a little director's chair and sits on the chair and does nothing. And it drives me nuts because he always gets the booth selection right before me and he always picks my booth. So I was a little perturbed. So, they, so I made the most of it only because you guys, look what I had to do. Again, I, this is what I have to do. So basically they told me that, well, this is your selection you have choose from a selection and I'm like but that's not what I uh, these are not the good choices can you split a booth for me and I'll be next to my friend oh no we can't split a booth and I said you know what let me speak to Tom the vice president of SEMA and she's like you want to speak to Tom I go yes I've spoken to him many times he knows me why don't you go talk to him so when I was on hold 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 next thing you know he goes just give it to her. Give it to her because in the past I've had to beg and scream and complain. 
So you guys, I got a booth that I wasn't excited about, but it's fine because I'm next to someone that I really love and we work really good with each other. So all in all, it worked out great. But what I want to say is, again, I have to fight for it. And every other guy I spoke to had no problem requesting what they wanted. No one had to talk and speak to the vice president. And, you know, so that's what it is, story of my life. Anyways, back to stuff with the jewel tools. So I love you guys all for the support. That's why I tell you guys I love your support because I have to deal with weird things on a daily basis when it comes to business. Right? I know. Kat says, crazy that I still have to put up with that. It's true, you know. Every year I tell myself, maybe I'll get better. Maybe I'll get better. But uh, year in and year in out, I'm always reminded that sometimes you just have to deal with this, these personalities, you know. I know. Tom goes, I should take that meat cleaver. I do. And I always tell them, I go, don't you guys want me in a good booth? You know the crowds that I draw. Why do you guys do this to me? It's like they all, on purpose, almost do it. Like, I don't understand. Whatever. Hello, Irina. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, you guys, I'm going to get started quick with the hammer because this is a flat nosed hammer. And so, this is basically anything you have that's flat like this. I'm going to use the Trizac wheels to flatten this. So, I'm going to use the Trizac wheel and the scratch erasers and then take it to a polish. Um, you don't really have to take this hammer to a polish, but it's not really difficult on a jewel tool. It's just one more step. So I'm going to take you guys real quick through these steps. Um, honestly, I'm not going to hit this with a purple. I don't think it's necessary. I think the Trizac will take the pits out already. It's, oh shoot, I'm really far. So I'm going to go overhead camera, Yara. So I am going to use the Trizac wheels, hold on, let me show you guys. Actually, I'm going to go back right out. So the Trizac wheels in these colors. You guys see the colors? I'm going to do this so you guys can see. So the green, oh, it's supposed to be the red, the blue, and the orange. They're all mixed up, but whatever. See how nice these little organizers are? <laughs> God bless them. Um, and then I'll be able to go to a polish. But if I want, let's say that I don't want the sharp corners, then I would use like the scratch eraser in a fine it is fine and smooth those sharp corners down. However, I like this to have sharp corners because okay, that's fine. Because I use Okay, you guys, I just want I just want you to know that Kristen just told me that you guys are all mad for me. And I just want to say, <sighs> you know, you guys, if I always got like kind of like stunted as like my whole story of Jewel Tool, you know, I wouldn't be where I am today. So I try to just, I always say, just shake the dust off. Shake the dust off. So I sh always shake the dust off, but I really wanted to share with you guys, like n everything isn't just unicorn and rainbows, you know, all the time with me. Anyways. <laughs> I love unicorns and I love rainbows. So you guys, I'm going to go back. So I, back to this. So I'm not going to use, I'll show you guys how to get the sharper edge out if you want with the scratch eraser. But because this is my hammer, this is what I use the sharp corner for. Actually, let me show you guys. Okay, so this is a ring mandrel. I'm going to actually pull out a little bit. Oh, wrong way. Okay, there you go. Okay, so this is just a metal ring mandrel, right? And like, let's say I want to size a ring, whatever, you know. So I always use that edge to kind of whack it down. So I'm secure and then I can continue hammering, for example. And then I always use that sharp corner to knock it out. And then I flip it around and I give it another tug back down to make sure I can now get a nice rounded even surface. And then, see, it gets, a, well, this one didn't get stuck, but sometimes they get really snug. You really need something to kick it off. So that's what I like about the sharper corners, for example. But nonetheless, I will show you guys how to clean this up. So I'm going to use the green and the Trizac. Actually, I just grabbed the four inch because it's so bright and uh, shiny. And I'm going to hold it in. Actually, this is good too because 
the four inch has a longer uh, reach, so you have a little bit more clearance. And I'll show you the comparison of the this one, the three inch. Okay, real quick. Okay, good. Let's show the side view. Pure perfect yarrow. Okay, so with this, since I I can clear it since my hammer isn't um, long, I can clear it no problem under the jewel tool. But if it was a longer hammer, I'd kind of have to work off the edge because I can't get in there. Do you guys see that if this was longer? But with the four inch, so that was a three inch. So with the four inch, this is what you get. You get more clearance. Like so even if my hammer was longer, I have a good amount of clearance still under the four inch. So that's another advantage to the four inch wheels, by the way. Didn't even think about showing that, but there you go. So I'm going to go ahead and, so with the four inch wheels, you don't, remember I told you guys this, you don't want to run it at full speed. You want to run it at full speed and then bring it down a little. You guys hear that? You can tell when it's not, you know, wanting to fly like, um, what's it called? Like a helicopter. So I'll go ahead and darken it just real quick. So you're just going to, uh, again, before I start, I'm holding it really nice with my left hand, and I'm going to grip the bottom right here. See that really nice right here? So I have good stability. And I almost want to say that I'm resting my hand, my little pinky, right here. I'm resting the rest of my hand along the jewel tool. And that gives you a nice little footing. You guys see this? So now I'm just going to lightly touch it and see where I am. You don't have to go like uh, crazy hard. So you can see where you are and just hold it there gently nice. And you get a nice little flat surface and get rid of all the pits. And when you're on it, go up and down, zhuzh it. Just zhuzh it up and down and then drop it. You guys see that? Look how pretty that looks actually. Look at that. Yeah, there's no way you can do this with a flex shaft and a little emery disc or on sandpaper especially in that amount of speed and preciseness no precision because you know we're actually just doing this hold on where's that right there and then when i say zhuzh it i just go like this zhuzh zhuzh okay so then you would go to the medium and then follow through so again i'm gonna go ahead and Run this little softer, hold on. Yeah, that thing that you put in here is, um, yeah, can you put the vacuum? Hold on. Thank you. Oh, that didn't work. We're so, <laughs> we're special today. So I'm going to go ahead and darken. Yeah, you guys, I always wanted to put like a little sticker cause saying just zhuzh it. And I never know how to spell zhuzh. Does anyone know how to spell zhuzh? Just curious. So just holding it there, kind of changing. You can change a little scratch pattern. So changing the scratch pattern helps, you guys. Do you guys see that? Oh my God. And so from here, so that was the medium. You guys see that? And then I'm going to use the fine. These are lovely and they will last you a good long while if you don't bust them. So don't bust them. Busting means working on the edge, so try not to work on the edge only when necessary to get into a corner, but for the, so I'm going to turn that a little higher. So I'm just going to hold it. Look, the second I make contact, I, I'm like just gliding it up against, there you go. There we go. And just hold it there. It's already at a polished level right here. You guys see that? Zhuzh it a little bit more here. And so no, so even if you just went straight to a polish, you guys, from here, you're good as gold. But I just wanted to show you all the way. So from that's the fine. And then now I'm going to go to the very fine. And that's a 5 micron. And I actually do a conversion. So it's around 3,000 grit. But it's actually finer than 3,000 grit. But what's great is, you can run like 3,000 grit at 5,000 RPM and the abrasive is going to last. Like for example, this is micro finishing film and this is 9 micron and it's super smooth. But if I keep running this at 5,000 RPM, 
the longevity of these are not the same as the Trizac. Trizac definitely, I'm going to actually turn my lights on. There we go, I've got some more light. They actually last a really long time. So it's a good investment, you guys, for metal. So look, so the second I touch it, look. So if you have like little scratch patterns, change up the little scratch pattern. And if you can't change it while you're on it, just get off and just do it here. I'll just show you. So change the scratch pattern and get off the wheel. No problem. You can do that if you don't want to do it all in one shot. So, you know, no rush. Just see where you are. Just stand there. Get it going. Just a light little touch is all you need. And this is with, you guys see that polish? That is without any kind of polishing compound. That was just off of the Trizac wheels. So do you guys see how ridiculously clean of a finish this gives? So, so what you see is little fine rub marks, you guys. You can either get those out with the magic buff, okay, or you can just touch it really quick on the felt wheel. It's like, it's really up to you. And that's if you want to go to a polish. Oh, I should have grabbed the four inch felt. Oops, sorry, it's okay. You, I have enough clearance, so I'll show you guys. So you just kind of real, just a quick little touch, you guys. You guys see that? Oh, Dolly. You guys see that? Where is that? Oh, Heidi, that was good. Drop the mic, Heidi. Heidi said it's an onionism. Spell it however way you want it. I love that. interesting so I want to show you guys what the magic thank you very much for how to spell zhuzh by the way look at that oh my god and so you're just gonna just hold it you don't want to like let it catch or anything just hold it like at the edge right here and look at that oh oh I don't know if you guys can see that polish but yeah you can so you just hold it right here At the what? Hold on. What's a side cutter? Okay, so do you guys see that? Like, this is not a joke. And then if you want to clean the rest of this hammer out. Oh, I want to show you guys. Like, let's say that I didn't want this edge sharp. I would use the magic eraser to go around the circle. I'm not going to use that magic eraser because I want my edge nice and, like, crisp. So I'm going to use the felt wheel to show you a demonstration of how to do that. So you would actually just kind of, let me go back. So I'm actually holding it with my left hand, and I'm just going to hold it right there and just kind of give it a roll on the edge and then flip it around and then give myself another roll on the edge, riding that little edge. Okay. Oh, yeah. So Tom, Mr. Negotiator, said it looks like chrome. It really does. In person, it's, it's gorgeous. I mean, you can get out some of the rub marks, but this is a hammer. We don't need to get it that perfect. Like, really, the whole idea is you don't want those pits. So, again, I'm going to switch hands, and so I'm going to go like this and go all the way to the edge right there and kill that little edge. Mm -hmm. So there you go. So that's if you wanted to smooth that edge down. I like my edge nice and crisp. Like it doesn't get any crisper than that. So that was doing the hammer. And the hammer, again, you guys, so just so you know what it looks like, the Trizac wheels. So let me show you real quick. So you see this. So I use, so they come in the three inch. So this is the coarse, medium, fine, and very fine. Then I used the four inch, as you can see, they're larger. Again, they're coarse, medium, fine, and very fine. So there. And then if you want to roll the corners down or even change it, if you want to just change like it to be really, really round, then I recommend to not waste your Trizac and go to the purple for shaping. Remember, purple is always going to be your workhorse for shaping. 
I wouldn't use the uh, trizac for for shaping. It's unnecessary. You're gonna waste a beautiful abrasive for and use it for purposes not intended. I repeat. So trizac is not for shaping, like mild shaping, yes. And kind of getting rid of a sharp edge, just a quick little kill the edge is what we say, yes. But if you want to like totally change this, it'd be different. But it's a little dirty. So I'm going to show you guys how to clean this up. Do you guys see that? So I actually have, what? Show it again, right here. It's dirty. You guys see that? Dirty, dirty, dirty. So since it's a nice wide surface, I'm going to get my new a uh, two inches, a two inch grubby cluster. It's a little wider than your cluster, uh, than your scrubbies. It's like a double stack. And this was actually used, you guys, on my stove. Do you guys see how dirty that was? So after the show was over, Yara loved this one and cleaned the stove with it. So I am actually going to sand that down because it's just gross. So remember yesterday I showed you guys how to clean your scrubbies? I'll show you again. Yeah, yes, and you guys, don't forget that you can pre-order the 2-inch and save money. And also pre-order the 4 inches. They also come in all the grades. Um, you'll also save money if you pre-order because we're shipping these out by next week. And so that, that pre-order will no longer be a pre-order. So know, know that they're arriving and your, wi uh, your window of pre-order will close <laughs> soon. Okay, so I'm going to turn the vacuum on. I'd use the hood, but right now I want you guys to see what I'm doing. So you can, again, i am just got a piece of cheap little wood here, and I'm going to hold it up against. So don't push too hard. And this is great to shape them if you want. If you want, like let's say you want that corner round. Say you do a lot of like bracelets that are domed. You can shape this to the exact, you know, shape of your piece that you work a lot on. But I think I'm good. But let me just double check. I like to actually use it one more time with my bare hand, kind of feel it a little, kind of get in areas that it didn't know. You're going to do a side view? Okay, then let me do it again. Yeah, you're good? Okay. And then just do a little thing. Okay, so that's that. So let's take a look at what we did. Oh, that's nice. Very nice. Much nicer. I could have done a little bit more, but honestly, this is used as a little workhorse, so I don't mind that. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and use this so you guys can see what it is. I'm going to put the vacuum on. So I'm going to hold it directly up against it and kind of push. It's really nice having that wide platform you guys look look at that just kind of go over it Ooh! oh that came out so pretty yarrow oh yes actually there's some heavier pits here so i'll hold it a little bit more look for the most part look at how clean that got look at that so you can so more stubborn ones, so the more stubborn ones, just hold it there a little bit. Don't push, just hold it there and just like leave it in a spot for a few seconds and it should get rid of it, look. You see how it got rid of that? You just hold it there for a few more seconds and you're good as gold. Look at that and it's glided right over that little area that had some epoxy. And you can do the sides as well. I'm not gonna spend the whole day doing this. There you go. And again, it, you can get all the way in here as well. You guys see that? Oh, that's a good one. Let me show you guys that too. Since it's nice flat, hold on, let me show you that. Let me show you how deep you can get in there. Hold on. Hold on, Rocky. Oh, yes, look at that, you guys. You can do the other side. Okay, so I'm not going to spend too much time, but remember, you guys, you should pre order these. Actually, these are really nice. And then the the four inches are really nice, you guys. They come in all grades. They're going to come in the very fine and the medium. And again, if you pre-order, you guys save some money. But I wanted to show you. Wait, I'm not going to show you this right now. Hold on. No. 
I wanted to show you guys how to clean something as nasty as this and this back of this bezel. You guys see this, this bezel is so gross. Do you see that? It's so bad. So I'm going to show you guys how to do both of those really quick. Thank you, Tom. He says, I'm making it look like new. Well, that's subjective. We want everything to look shiny, shiny. Who wants ugly stuff? I love sparkle. I love shiny stuff. So I'm going to show you guys this real quick because as you can see, it's got like an area where I got to get into. It's really old and disgusting. I don't know if you guys can see and it's lumpy and bumpy. Same with the top. So I'm going to focus a little bit on the top and then show you guys how to do the back. So first, first things first is I'm going to get my very fine scratch eraser. I say very fine because it's silver and I don't want it to create any kind of lines. So I'm just going to see how, how uneven we are. Let's see how uneven we are. Just give a quick little zippity doo da, And just now I'm going to hold it in certain areas and like work it. Do you guys see that? So already the magic eraser is going to town. Now, if the area is very lumpy, you can do this with the fine and then hit it with the very fine. But I just want to show you guys that. Do you guys see that? Same with the sides. Don't forget the sides. Do not neglect the sides. See how you can really get in there? Lovely. So I'll show you how to get in there. So wherever I can right now with the scratch eraser, I'm going to clean up before I go to a brush or anything else. So I'm just going to clean up wherever I can reach and get into. I'm going to definitely maximize this little workhorse. You guys see that? So now we're going to do the back. You guys just follow with that little lump in the back. So this is really, really, really pitted back here. So I probably would like to use the fine, but I'm just going to keep going just so you guys can see how to get into that really hard to reach area. So this is really pitted in the back. You guys see all the pits? I think this is a metal clay piece, actually. This is silver metal clay. And it's going to get warm, you guys. I'll give you guys a warning. So make sure you have these little finger doodads. So anytime you want to smooth out, I want to show you guys. So this is metal clay. I didn't realize that, but I could tell from the way it looks. It's metal clay. So all here is so nasty and lumpy. Do you guys see that? We got pits. So I might use the fine, but let's just see how far we go. If not, I'm going to go straight to a polish. So real quick, just hold it there a little, kind of get those little lumps out. You know, I know. Kat says the scratch eraser is one of her favorite wheels. You guys, you got, this is why it's one of her favorite. It's one of my favorite. So you guys just. Yes, so the very the s scratch eraser can smooth the area out. I love that. That was a comment. They love it because it doesn't remove the texture. It, do it really doesn't, you guys. There is no abrasive known to man. I don't care if you use rubber wheels or whatever that can do what I'm doing right now. So I'm going to just leave it like that, you guys. I mean, I can work this pit out here. Let's, let's say if I hold it there a little longer... Yes, pits go away, but you get the idea, right? Do I have to show you, just hold it there longer and the pits will go away? And then if it does get warm because it's silver, just give it a second, maybe put it on like a metal block. I don't have a metal block, but you get what I mean, and I'll quickly pull the uh, heat, and you're fine, you're ready to go. So I'm going to show you guys how to polish. In oh, wait, let me do this side. Oh, don't forget. Yes. Okay, so we have a question on the two-inch scrubby. Go ahead. Actually, I'm going to show you real quick. That's a good question. So 
Margaret wanted to know, so this is a lot of, the reason why I like the scrubby, um, the four inch one, because you have a lot of surface area. Let me show you guys, you guys see that? Look at this sucker. And so even though I use the bottom of this to get under here, do you guys remember that? I used the bottom of the two inch. Look at the size of the two inch versus the four inch. So the four inch would have totally taken care of this. Oh wait, let me move the camera. Hold on, do you guys see that? It'll totally have taken care of the hammer. Hold on. Yeah, 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 it's okay. I'm just holding a million things, no problem. So you could have totally done that, no problem. So, but what I wanna show you is, like let's say I wanna even just do this surface really quick, I wanna do a quickie, you know? Just hold it like right here, look. Well, I'm gonna turn the vacuum on. And see what, and you can actually work from the top, where, oh wow, look at that, that's even pretty too. Look at that, that's even a pretty finish. You can work from below, do you know what I mean? So you, and you can work from the side if you really want. So the side would be interesting because it gets rid of lumps and bumps and it kind of almost does a lot of the work, maybe even before your scratch eraser, come to think of it. Look at that. You guys see that? So if you wanted to, you could just go to like the scratch eraser at this stage. That's kind of cool. It's very sturdy you guys it really holds it very nice so if you wanted to go to the scratch eraser now let's go back to the very fine see what that finish looks like so this was the very fine side we worked on you guys see how lovely and buttery that is Ooh la la living for that and this is a side of the fine scrubby so i'm gonna actually just touch it but look at how quick it cleans it up you guys are you guys seeing what I'm seeing? Super, super quick. It cleans it up and it gives that ridiculous finish. And your hands are not dying of pain. You didn't have to go through a gazillion steps of sandpaper. You know, all is wonderful in the world. I should have done that area more, but you get the idea, you guys, right? Kind of work that area. Okay, so you guys, I think I'm pretty good. Kind of get in there. I wasn't planning on doing the whole backside, but hell, now that we're at it. But uh, what I want to show you is from here, how to get into those crevices, that one that, especially that one I worked in. But like, just with the scotch Bright alone and the magic eraser, look at how tight I was able to get into that corner. That's why corners are important to, you know, keep on your um, scratch erasers. So I am going to, I'm going to use the felt wheel. I love her. <laughs> oh my God. How do I not, how can I not say hi to you, Leslie? Leslie, you are like our star woman over here. You're an inspiration to us all after. We thought you were like this this young little girl talking on the phone with so much energy and you're like I'm so I don't want to say your age but you 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 know you, you you like made us fall off of our chair we were like so in awe of you so we know you have good genes because your mom has lived a long time so kudos to you we love you we love you Leslie okay so I'm gonna keep going so let's go back to the felt wheel so I'm gonna give myself a good amount of compound Oh wait, not felt yet. No, wrong way. Sorry. I got too excited. No, felt we will do in just a bit. But first, we are going to do the uh, brushes. Now, you could have done the brushes ahead of time, or you could do them now. It, 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 I didn't feel as though it was affecting the process. So I'm going to use these grades. I might actually use even the 120, but I don't know what happened to it. So I'll just use the 220. Oh, I used it on my, <laughs> you're gonna laugh. I used it, you guys don't laugh. Look what I did. I used it on my stove to get into the crannies. So I stacked them. I stacked the 80 and the 120 <laughs> so it would do the same job and kind of smooth it as you pushed away from it. There it is, that's where it is. Okay, Ugh. so either way, I'm gonna still do the 220, but look at how nice I can get right in there. So this is the two inch brushes, just so you know how nice 
the two inch brushes are they get into a really nice hard to reach areas you guys see that lovely clean 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 get into that area right there same with that front oh we forgot about the front jeez we've been concentrating on the back so much totally forgot about the front <coughs> you guys see that and just so you know if you just want to sand finish if you're just going to do this it's not that pretty do you see how it's still like orange peely you really have to get that surface smoothed for it to look you know professional you know you really want it it's all about the finishing i'm telling you guys so that's that oh and then if you wanted to do again if i don't get to it just know that these fit into like cuffs like if you have a cuff like this just so you know it'll fit into will this fit into it yeah it's actually gonna fit into it it'll fit into this cuff just to show you guys how it stands i'm gonna do a little half portion or go in all the way just to give you an idea of how this okay yes so carol said that oh carol you're adorable so you guys people always ask me what's the difference between the four inch wheels versus the three inch wheels so carol just said it she got a new set of four inch wheels and she says she loves them so she says they're much easier on her what on her old hands oh you don't have old hands on her old hands and the reason why i just real quick you guys just based on that comment this is what she's talking about so if you don't know what she's talking about this is kind of what she's saying like let's say you have something you want to do the surface up okay but like it's like it you don't have to do much so when she says so much easier on your hands like you can sit there with your hands rested and just use your fingertips to do the work. Like it's got so much more versatility, so much more clearance. It's just a complete, you know, an utter game changer. Like it's just so, you get so much, um, what's the word I'm looking for you guys? Like range of motion, range of motion. That's what you get. You definitely get a lot, here, I'll do it again. You definitely get a lot of range of motion. Like, look, just hold it there, just chill. La, 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 You can do the sides like this. You know, we're talking a lot of range of motion. So that's, that's what, that's the difference on the four inch, you guys. I know it's hard to understand them unless you actually work with them, but honestly, Every person that I said here, you feel what the four inch does. Yeah, and it's definitely more see-through. Yes, you can see all the way through. Well, that's why I was holding the whole big, long, big, big, wide bangle all the way to the whole surface. I could see all the way through. So it doesn't make you want to kick, kick you out out here. Oh. Okay, so that's interesting, you guys. So Nicole Richie just said something. You know, Nicole, so Nicole said, and so much faster. I love her reaction. You're so cute, Nicole. So she said they're faster. I understand they're faster. I actually noticed they get the job done a little faster. So that's why I always tell you reduce the speed because things happen really quick. So don't forget, Nicole, reduce the speed. Um, so that's why I say run them at medium, but they really do get the job done a little faster. She said she finished what, Kristen? So she finished a project in 20 minutes versus an hour with the three inch. Interesting. That's a good little uh, advantage that we're going to take note. Thank you. You know, your feedback to me is also important. You know, I, I see it from one angle but you know you guys have different other you know facets you can add to the advantages of it and i welcome it thank you so much for that okay so i'm gonna go back to the silver um pendant don't think i forgot about it don't think i neglected it so i'm gonna hit it with the 400 grit there you go get in there you see how smooth that is and get in there too just remember 
that they this these will scratch the um the silver so if you're going in this direction you see how it creates lines there so take it and kind of feather it back into everywhere else so it's not creating a one liner does that make sense a one liner what am i saying today i'm even making up words lovely so that i'm going to leave that the way it is so then we're going to show you the six micron and i'm using the two inch because the two inch are really great at getting into like really tough spots nooks and crannies i really like the way so if i'm holding it in this direction i kind of change the little zhuzh pattern to kind of feather it in so you don't see it so you don't want to stay in that same pattern kind of just zhuzh it back and forth like that and there you go i could have worked on this area more but you get the idea just go over it with the scotch brake okay so then of course you can use the green brush if you want to see what that looks like i usually wait for the end but I'll just show you guys what that looks like now. If you're just interested in seeing how the brushes perform. Remember, I'm not just doing a project, you guys. I am like showing you how the products perform because everyone has a different, you know, need for it. So there you go. Okay, so Bonnie says that the four inch diamond right the diamond oh yeah the diamond is a great game changer when working on stones yeah I, it is lovely i must admit i actually do like the four inch on the stones and the grinding process is much more again it's faster it really is so honestly if you guys have the four inch i mean the three inch and are thinking about the four inch you know we've got free shipping going on so it'd be a good time but Everyone has their times, but it's really great to have. So remember, you guys, I was going to do the felt. So I already put compound on it. already did that. So I'm going to go ahead and just hold it. So hold it there. So look, I'm just going to hold it in a section. I'm not going to try to do the whole thing at once. So I just got rid of all the scratches in this section. Do you guys see that? It's kind of like how I tell you guys to do the polishing on a stone section by section don't go over the whole thing all at once and expecting it to be perfection it doesn't work like that when you're polishing so you definitely get that out of there so that's the finish you get with the felt i know it's not completely even you guys this is metal clay and i don't want to grind it and change it i probably could have bent it with a plier but i wanted you guys to see this result on what we had now Okay, you c I'm sure if you make it, you can make it better than this. So kudos to you for doing that. So now you can finish the polishing with this. So remember, this was a side we did with the scrubby. So I didn't take out the pits and didn't concentrate too much on taking the pits out here. Only because, you guys see that? I just wanted to show you taking the pits out on this side. So do you see what I mean? Like, look at the quality of this polish. Even though it's on the little lumpy side, it, it's almost forgiven when you look at it in person, Yaro. So I'm going to do the other side, and then I'm going to hit it with the magic buff. So give me a second. I'm going to go ahead and do this side. We only did one side, so. So section by section, and it won't take the patina off, which is lovely. And if you wanted to get near, oh, hold on, guys. Sorry, I'm just on that. So if you wanted to get near the, I was thinking about this area and looking here. See, you should pay attention. So I want to show you, like, if you want to polish this section with the felt, let me show you guys my technique, okay? So I'm going to hold it like this. No, uh, overhead is fine. Uh, so I'm holding it with two hands right here and supporting the back with my index finger. And I'm going to tilt it nose down. Maybe you can show that, Yaro. Okay, there you go. So make sure you put compound on the edge. So I'm going to hold it nose down. Is that good, Yaro? Okay, so I'm going to get right in that area and kind of level it up a little and kind of just polish it up, bring it all together. 
And there you go. That's a, then that's what we got so far. Like, look at that. I mean, even if it's curved, it's just following the light so beautifully. Do you guys see what I mean? Yes, so this is a, yes. Th so Margaret says she loves to use it on her fired metal clay pieces. This is one. And so when you're just going to polish that outer edge, you guys, just hit it and get that extra crispness. Do you guys see what a difference that makes? Like, you don't understand. It really makes... That is true. So someone who knows about metal clay, Margaret, yes, Margaret, thank you, and said if this was properly prepped before firing and properly done, I wouldn't have to deal with all of this nasty lumpiness. It's true. It's true. But I, I want to show you the worst case scenario so that you guys are prepared to handle anything that comes your way. No, I'm going to show, I'm going to clean it with a uh, magic buff right now. Absolutely, you guys. Just clean up your tools with the jewel tool. Honestly, really. It so I'm going to use the magic buff. So let me put that wrong way. Hold on. So I'm running this at full speed. You can run it about medium. I'm going to take my fingertips off because these have gotten quite dirty. Just to show you real quick of how it polishes. Just to give you an idea of a quick little polish, how it gives you. It's really nice. You don't push hard. And remember, if these start to get dirty, just grab some little sandpaper and sand that down just a little. I'm not going to do it too much because mine is pretty clean. But you know what I mean? Just a little just a little zhuzh here and there, and you're good to go. But mine is clean, so I'm not going to do that too much. But do you guys see how you quickly get a shine? Really nice. Very, very nice. There you go. Let me do the front. Hold on. The front is actually pretty. Very nice. And you just lightly touch with the magic buffs, you guys. You don't need to push hard. And it'll give you that really pretty polish. Just a light touch, you guys, because it's supposed to just give you that extra pop of shine. Can you see that? Yeah. There you go. I didn't finish this, but you get the idea. Yes. And then you can do the edge. I didn't show the edge, but let me show you how nice and crisp the edge is. Okay, so we have a question coming in. Give me a second. But look at that edge, you guys. Like, if you don't properly do your edges, then it looks like slop. You know? Like that. Like, what? No, we want this. Okay, so enough of me. Okay, what's the question? Yes. So, yeah, that's good. That's a way of saying it. Absolutely. Bonnie says it takes it to from handcrafted to finely handcrafted. That's what I'm, like, screaming at the hilltops, you guys, this whole time saying. Yes. Like, just think. This did not come cheap. You had to buy the silver. You had to buy the kiln. You spent the time to make it. And then you're going to take a brass brush and clean it or throw it in a tumbler? No, this is not what a fine jeweler would do. Just imagine going into a jewelry store and looking at the showcase filled with jewelry. Would you expect every edge to be completely finished? Would you expect it to have a high polish? Would you expect it to have a perfect satin finish? The answer is yes, because that's the level of fine quality. Fine quality, darling, fine quality. You know, so I, I want your pieces to look handcrafted. That's the beautiful thing of all this artisan work. People love that. I love it. But we don't want it to look unfinished. You know, one lady, I, 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 God, I forgot her name, but I see her every year at the Glass Craft and Beach Show. And she tells me, she told me that Ani, she told me this years ago, and I see her every year. She says, you know, Ani, I would go to like a boot, uh, like she'd sell her stuff at a boutique, and she says that I would always notice people picking up the pieces, 
that were pre the jewel tool she says and they would they put them down and she goes they would ultimately end up buying the pieces that were polished with the jewel tool and i said exactly people are drawn to fine finished things you like you know you it's all in the details i like a fine you know I like to find everything, <laughs> you know. We're just drawn to it by nature. We just know, you know, that's cool quality. Yeah, so basically your level of finish and your level of workmanship is really based on the final polished look, whether it's a satin finish, whatever, but the final finish is what s separates you from the rest. It really is. We used to always say it in the jewelry world, you can sit at this bench and make the most beautiful piece of jewelry. And then you give it to the polisher and he will either make you or break you. Plain and simple. So I am not a fan of polishing your jewelry at the bench. I can't handle another video of a professional jeweler telling you to finish your piece with a flex shaft. Please stop this nonsense. I just need this to be clear and you need to know that if they're putting it out there does not necessarily mean that this is correct. No fine jeweler that I have ever met in my life and I've gone to manufacturing facilities that if I drop names right now you guys would know they're actually on Rodeo Drive and on Fifth Avenue. Not one finishes the piece at the bench. They prepare it for the final polish Yes, and do the detail. If you have a jewel tool at the bench, that's a different story. Um, you know, all, all across Texas, that big jewel a jewelry manufacturer has a jewel tool at every single bench. So instead of doing all the fine work with the little flex shaft, they do a lot of the fine work at the bench, and it's just ready for a final high polish by the time they give it to the, uh, uh, to the uh, polisher. So just so you know, you guys, <coughs> Because, <coughs> that's right, preach it, sister Nicole says, yes, preach. Really, it, it, it is, and I don't want you guys to fall prey to this nonsense. Be misled, because I created the jewel tool to make it easier to polish instead of using that big buffer. It's, you know, and so I knew that I couldn't get the desired finishes that I wanted with a flex shop. I had a flex shaft. So why, if this was the answer from God, why would I create the jewel tool? You know better than me that there's so many things you can do easily, easy on your hands, controlled. Th I mean, just look at the fluidity of this polish. Like, it's not, it's not a joke, you guys. It's like real beautifully fluid. So from, you know, from that mi ugliness. Yeah, no zooming. Uh, we like zooming in. I want zoom. I want the zoom zoom. I know. That's another thing. You know what? If I'm going to preach it, I'm going to preach it hard, you guys. So all you people out there, when I watch a video, I'm sorry. I don't need to put like a gazillion. I don't even wear glasses to see far. But they're like, you see how I did that? And they're like this. You see that? Like, how am I supposed to see this? Zoom in. Let me see your quality, your work. Ooh. Anyways. Go on. I have a question. What's up? Okay, so to get the scratches out of the bale, Margaret asked. So, Margaret, I said earlier that I would have, since it's really pitted, I'll probably use either the medium or the fine to get those little suckers out. So I'll probably use the medium. So if you really want to see it, I'll show you. No problem, guys. So remember, so I have scratches on the bale. Do you guys see that? They're really bad scratches bad bad okay so watch how i'm going to do this so i'll actually do it hopefully without touching anything on the sides i don't know how tweaked up this is but i think i'll be okay so i'm going to actually hold it a little bit so just hold it there kind of blend that metal away so it'll get there really quick so you don't have to do any kind of crazy 80 grit right now do you guys see how ready wi what we've already accomplished Cheryl, can you get a zoom in that and I'm going to go in for this section now. So I didn't do all of it all at once because it was so pitted. I said, let me do a little section by section. You know how I like to do my sections. And thank you, Margaret, for uh, 
Uh, who said, so actually someone said that they learned how to do section by sections. So look, see, yeah, now I'm not, now I bring it all together. Do you guys see that? How I got that one out? Where am I? There we go, right there. You see that? So no more. So now if I'm going to go in this direction, so we're going to hold it here. So we're going to, you see how lumpy and bumpy that is? So just hold it, kind of get it. This is a really good way to get something nice and even. Rock it back and forth, kind of move the metal. And once you're there, oh yeah. Bring it home. Bring it home, baby. You guys see how clean that is now? Okay. All right, so now from the medium, you know, you can go to a polish from the medium, but to make your life easier, just give it a quick little zippity doo dah with the very fine, because that'll kind of get rid of kind of the rougher, and you'll see it's a little finer shine. You'll see. Look at the finish, you guys. Look, let me show you guys real quick. Do you guys see how much shinier you get with the very fine? That's a really good example of the very fine. Th so I just did that area. It's beautiful. Do you see that fluidity? I don't care how good I am on the flex shaft. There's no way on God's green earth I could do that on the flex shaft. It'll take you a while to get rid of all those lumps. And what are you going to use? You know, just go <coughs> back and forth a million times? No. It has its uses, you guys. Trust me. I always show you guys the flex shaft uses. If I didn't think the flex shaft had uses, I would not sell it. But like there's times in a there's time and a place for everything. You see that already? Hello. So I just work my way section by section. Let me put some more compound. If you see it doing nothing, that means you need some compound. So give yourself some compound. Yeah, you can show the side view. kind of show how I'm getting getting into that little crevice yeah that yeah I'll, I'll, I'll emphasize that side a little bit more you guys and show how I'm doing that and then I drop it like it's hot it's not hot I just said that you guys see that wow oh I mean you guys don't understand like this metal clay silver polishes so beautifully. And again, I would just knock that little compound right off of that and any other compound that I have and just hit it real quick with the magic buff and call it a day and go have a little drinky drink. No, I'm kidding. I don't know. <laughs> Making things up. There you go. Oh, la, la. This makes everything so much more fun. You know, definitely more fun. Who wants a struggle? You know, just really quick. So, um, just another quick thing. Yes, front cam. So, what else was I going to show? I wanted to show this, but I guess, I guess tomorrow. Tomorrow's another day. We'll keep showing new things. But you guys, I just wanted to let you know we still. You guys are going like ham on this free shipping. I just want you to know, whoever's watching this. Like, okay, we, so we have this free shipping going on for any orders going over $199 on our website at jewelsoul.com. There you go. Yeah, Yara put up on the screen. That's beautiful. Yes. And, man, it's like, you guys think of something. Can I add to my order? <laughs> Can I add to my order? I love you guys. My peeps, thank you very much for all the orders. I appreciate it. Um, so just to recap what I did today. I mean, there's so much, I mean, honestly, you guys, there's still so much I can show you. I still have, like, a bunch of stuff I wanted to show you, but I guess it'll just go to tomorrow. But I want you guys to know that the pre-order is going on, but it's only, you probably have, the last chance to do that pre-order is probably by the weekend. Um, because, but, yeah, and then we'll actually, so the pre-order for the the 4-inch scrubbies, and these will actually be, available the four inch yeah so the yeah so the four inch scrubbies will be shipping out you guys next week so get your pre-orders in you, so yes yeah, so the three this is the three inch but the same grades you see here will be available in the four inch so these are for pre-order if you pre-order and you pre-order with the free shipping you don't get charged any additional shipping when we ship it out to you once they become available next week 
Um, but you do save money on them, so it's a great chance to pre-order them. And they come in all three grades. Same with the two inch, right? Yeah, the two inch also. This is the one I used. I really like this little two inch scrubby. It's right here. Oh, so the four inch. Oh, that's a good deal. So that's individual. And then this is the this is the two inch. So the two inch is gonna be thicker, just like I showed you. That's the one I did the hammer. It's really nice to have a quick little zippity doo da on your jewelry pieces, putting beautiful satin finishes on. So these are lovely, and they have a long lifespan because, of course, they are 3M. Don't mess. We're still waiting for our face masks, by the way, from 3M. We ordered them back in February because we, we sell them on our website because, you know, I'm a 3M distributor. And, yeah, not here yet. Yes, yeah, so we have some quick uh, question and answer time. I'll do that real quick. Go ahead. Okay, so Donna asked, if I'm going to buy either scratch erasers or scrubbies, which would I choose? Honestly, I like both. <laughs> um, if anything, I would tell you to get both. Maybe kind of hold off on different grades for now until you see the value of what they're going to be used for. Wait. Oh, the specific grades? Okay, well, here. You know what? By the time I explain it, let me just show you real quick. If you're on the fence with what grade to get with a scotch Bright, with a scratch eraser, let me put your mind at ease and show you real quick. I, I mean, I could talk till I'm blue in the face, but I'll just show you it's so much quicker. Like in the next one minute, you'll see like a few different grades come right past your eyes. So y'all, give me an overhead cam. So let's. So if you have something that's like really, really rough, okay. Um, the the medium grade is going to give you the better uh, bang for your buck because it has an extreme long lifespan. So if I have, like, let me show you an edge. These are really sharp edges. They were cut with, um, look, do you guys hear that? They were cut with a really weird scissor that had little things in it. I actually just want to, I'm going to grind it down. I'm looking for my 80 grit. So I'm going to actually create a burr to make the edge even worse. So let's say you're just grinding the whole side down, the whole, we created a huge burr, all sorts of stuff, okay? These are great too, the, the purple uh, grinding kit, you guys, that also comes as a mounted kit. So you have this really rough area. If you use the medium, the medium is going to give you a quick cleanup job within seconds. And it won't be destroyed. Look how quick and clean that got. You guys see that? And let's say if I wanted to even put a satin finish, it's a real pretty satin finish, just to give you an idea of what that looks like. It'll clean up a surface and gives you a really pretty satin finish. And it still works into like, you know, curved areas too. So that's also another benefit of them. You see how they work? They clean up all sorts of nastiness. So don't be fooled by the medium. So if you really need a real nice workhorse, the medium is great. Then I would say the fine. The fine I have in the four inch. So let me show you guys the difference on this. So again, if I have, again, rough areas here, look at that. Look, look hear that? Look at that. It still would handle it. Watch this. Don't get me wrong. It still handles it like a charm. Cleans it up. And it gives you also a real pretty satin finish. You see that? So that's also nice. And it also will conform into... This is a little bit softer, the conformability, I would say. It's really nice, you guys. And the, like I said, the 4-inch is going to last longer, too. You know, and if you wanted to just do that edge real quick, you could just lay it on there, kind of do an area like that, and it cleans up the whole side. So that's the advantages of the 4-inch, and I have it. Look, look. So that's at high speed, but I'm going to slow it down, and I'm going to get this real delicious satin finish in there. Look at that, you guys. Look at how pretty that satin finish is. 
if I keep going. It's really lovely. You see how it just like went up, bloop, 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 bloop. It's really like conformable, like blah, 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 blah. really pretty, but look, it's so buttery. Okay, so now, the so the scratch erasers are not going to do any of this. What they're going to do is they're going to clean up anything and give you a more even surface. Do you see that? So like let's say that center is kind of faded with the course. It kind of ate that one little area. But if you're going to use this, let's say, on the uh, with the scratch eraser, let me show you how we would do this. So we'd go down, hold it right here. Do you see the finish? It's a totally different change. So we're going to get in there, smooth that all down. I'm going to do a section so you guys see. So we're going to smooth that area right there. And it just brings a whole different look to it. It's just two different wheels. I don't know how else to explain it. Do you guys see what I mean? It just cleaned it out very nicely. And again, if you wanted to do the edge, you would go like this and clean it up and see it. They're just two different wor ways to work. You know, what can I say? But let's say that it was an area that was a little bumpy and the surface was not good. I would use the scratch eraser first. And then let's say I would use, if I wanted a satin finish or a polish, so I would use this to give myself a real smooth satin finish. Look at that. Just give a quick little zip de do da Nice buttery finish. Do you guys see that? See how fluid it gets? Hold on, let me stop that, Yarl. Okay, is it focusing, Yarl? The, hold on. The, there. There you go. That's it. And then again, if you wanted to polish this from that, you say you change your mind, by all means, polish it. You guys get the idea, right? Yeah. So, and so I hope that helped. It's just, you know, don't forget, you guys, we still have, like, there's the course of the scratch eraser. So they really have different purposes. Like, let's say if I wanted to get, you know, that sharp corner. You guys see that, sh that little corner right there? And I run to round it off without using the purple. Like the the coarse scratch eraser does that. Like it's like delicious. So in it here, this is the finish it also leaves too, so you guys can see. It's pretty smooth, doesn't leave like much scratches behind, just so you know. And that's that. Okay. So I hoped I really hope I hope that helped answer. Um, I hope that helped answer that, you know, throughout the week and as I continue with these, I'll even do more projects and you guys can see the applications of each one. Um, but it really depends on your specific piece. Um, any other questions, Kristen, before I... Okay, so I'm going to answer. There's two more coming, so let me go ahead and answer these two, you guys. So Janet has a golden gray bracelet. Okay, so what's safe for the engraving nettle polish? So first, foremost, you need to put your inspector hat on. Inspector gadget. Da -da 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 -da. And you're going to analyze the engraving. You're going to see, is this engraving very like lightly engraved? Is it old? Has it kind of worn down? How deep is that engraving? That's what you first should notice. And if you notice that the engraving is not very deep, then I would say use your green brush to polish. But if the green brush is not, you know, it's not gonna ha it's not gonna polish how you want it. So what I would tell you is, around the engraving, if there's extra, I guess extra, extra gold, like say the engraving was right here, and all of this is scratched up. So what I would do is I would clean up the scratches with only, I repeat, only the felt wheel. Because the felt wheel, you'd have to hold it there for a long time over 
the um, engraving to kind of have much impact of removal. So I would just go over the areas that are not near the engraving, kind of clean those up, clean all the sides up wherever there's no engraving, let's say, and then give it one light pass over and then use the green brush to kind of get in between those nooks and crannies of the engraving. Does that make sense? That's what I would do. And people have brought me engraved pieces at a show and said, can you polish this? And I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. This looks, looks, looks like something your ancient great, 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 great grandma gave you. I'm not going to be the one to take off that engraving. <laughs> so I, that's how I always tread with caution. I polish everywhere around it and lightly one little zippity doo dah across and then the green brush is my best friend. <coughs> so I know that sounded weird, but whatever. Okay, so next one more question. Go ahead. Okay, how do you clean off the silver? Okay, so someone asked, how do you remove, how do you polish the silver after the pickling? Clean, clean off, whatever, clean off the silver after the pickling. So you are going to, like, listen, if, you're p if you've already polished the piece and you put in the pickle and it turned a different color, okay, you're going to have two different roads. If it's already pretty polished, you might just want to zippity doo dah with the green brush. Call it a day and maybe touch it right after that with the magic buff and you're done. And if you still, if you see some little things left behind on the pickle, sometimes there's like, I don't know if this was soldered, if there's little flux stains or whatever, then you would use your felt wheel only and just bring it back, bring it back. Wheel it back in, honey. Just uh, follow through with your polishing. But if it's dull from the pickle and you haven't polished it yet, by all means, my darling, you need to use a scratch eraser and follow through with the polish. Ta-da! Does that make sense? Okay. Okay, so that concludes the question for today. I will, uh, if you have any more, or if you're watching the replay, put the comments below and I'll answer them on tomorrow's live show. So you guys, don't forget, we have our free shipping going on over orders of $1.99. We have our pre-order set to finish by this weekend. And what else am I forgetting? Yeah, so you guys, oh my God, you guys who have bought, who love the organizers are really liking this free shipping action. I'm like, <laughs> I've become UPS and a uh, priority mail right here, right here. This is what you're looking at. So you guys, it's a really good time. And not only that, you guys are getting the, like the extra, the long ones. And then, oh, don't forget you guys, I have the extra large ones and these are great. We use them for everything around here you guys so don't forget these these are great look and they've got a solid white bottom and they got the little handles on the side like if i showed you guys the rest of jewel tools headquarters actually the stickers on all of sides uh, when you get this oh yeah and don't forget oh you guys we have the pink ones for mother's day don't forget if you guys want to get some if you have a mom that or someone that ha loves pink we have our limited edition uh, pink organizers. You want to flash them right there? They're over there. They're really pretty. They're very, like, I, I think that, I don't know what the color looks like on the screen, but we only have them in medium. But it's a very pale, pale pink. Like, so Yarrow says, like, it, it does, but it's a little, the screen looks a little too pink. Like, this is white. They're really, 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 really pale. Right, Kristen? I wouldn't say they're pink. Like, they all are pink. There's no other way. Like, you know, think of the Easter colors, those pastel tones, the pink on that one. That's exactly the color. So, you guys, I think that handles for today. Tomorrow I'll come out with more exciting stuff. And um, also, our these are also on sale, too. Our new scr uh, scratch erase. Oh, wait, I'm not even showing it. I'm so bad at showing things. Yeah. So <laughs> this is live. Live. I know we're going to get it right now. Hold on. She's on another call. So you guys, uh, Kristen, get it. <laughs> okay. So 
<laughs> you guys, this is the, the scratch erasers. You guys are also on uh, sale, the ones that go on your flex shop. And they come in multiple sizes. Look. And there's even one more, the mushroom. Oh, ho, ho, the mushroom. The mushroom and then these. There you go. These sizes. So these are really nice. And these are going to be a fine. Only one that's a medium is the round ball. Other than that, they're going to leave a really fine finish. It still leaves a fine finish, too. But I have to be. So, and then again, you guys, I g I've been working with 3M. And so we have some new wheels coming next week. So I can't wait for some new items to show you. Some items that you've never, never seen that are like the see-through for texturizing. And, oh some yummy stuff coming your way i can't wait to show you i can't tell you anymore but just stay tuned you guys i got some good things coming in the pipeline so you guys i wish you a wonderful blessed and happy day thank you so much for watching it means the world to me and i just want you guys to know how much i appreciate it and i wish you a wonderful day so you guys see you guys here tomorrow so have a great one bye for now thanks for watching Mwah.